Okay. Oh. Why will the unconscious not play ball and cannot <laughs> change everything, everything with hypnotherapy? And I, yeah, I made a, you know, in my last video, I made a thing, a confusing statement that uh, hypnotherapy in its main frame is similar to muscle. No, it's not. I mean, hypnotherapy I was talking about is generally kind of like atheistic, secular. Um, some of it is spiritual. You get past life with Russian people and spiritual, spiritual hypnotherapists, but they're a minority. When you're, now, actually, there are tricks that hypnotherapists use to try and force the unconscious to agree. Um, just like you're speaking to a child, you you know you can you can speak sternly to the unconscious. Like um, I I'm gonna you know you speak with authority for it to go to the to the memory that created the uh, uh, the genesis of that belief system. So whether whether it picked it up at three years old and and there was an unforgiveness or a trauma or whatever, and you can do a forgiveness process on it at that time. Sometimes you you can use another trick, which is um, ask it to substitute the secondary payoff for something else. So it will give up a, an expression of one belief system to express it in a different way. So instead of cigarettes, you're going to drink water. Is that acceptable to the unconscious to switch? I'm going to now explain to the unconscious mind that cigarette smoking, which you thought when you were 14 years old, was good for you because it allowed you to be, um, uh, to, be to have more friends. But now you Speaking to the unconscious, you now realize this is harmful to you at the age of 65 years old. Would the will the unconscious be able to substitute um, the behavior of cigarette smoking for drinking water? Yes or no? And, it, and if it says yes, then it will just switch it to drinking water instead of, um, mm. instead of uh, smoking cigarettes. Now, Sometimes, uh, and then, or you can try and reason with the unconscious. If it still doesn't get, allow you to do something, you can give it reasons why. So you, and a hypnotherapist will try and persuade the unconscious to delete a belief system or change it, or re-educate it, or take it back to the memory whereby some trauma happened, and do a forgiveness process and delete the negative emotions surrounded with that, and so it can now let go of a belief system or behavior that happened due to some kind of negative incident. Um, sometimes you can ask the unconscious why it's doing something or holding a belief system or why it will not let it go. And, and, the, and the hypnotherapists have a bag of tricks to get that information out. But I think, you know, I had this thing of... Um, now, probably in some places they may even teach you that you've got so many tricks that you can always win. But I don't really believe you've got necessarily you always have enough tricks that you can mm -hmm. always win. Or you might, you might win at a cost mm -hmm. um, when dealing with the unconscious. Because, um, why? Because, um, so I was training as a hypnotherapist and I had my, um, I had, and we were told to practice in pairs, you know, and hypnoth hypnoth you know, do hypnotherapy on each other. And obviously I was into spirituality at the time, and I was doing this hypnotherapy course a long time ago. And I asked my fellow colleague, who was a training hypnotherapist, to ask my unconscious why it was overeating. And you know, to, so you could do some deep work on it, like take me back and give the reasons. And, you know, she, so she took me into hypnosis and she asked my unconscious, why are you doing this? And it, wouldn't, it refused to answer her. <laughs> And I knew that if I got the answer, it would let it go. But it refused to answer. And then you have all the tricks to force the unconscious yeah. to change. And, and she, she wasn't able for me to release that information. And I was like, I, consciously I wanted the information to be released from my unconscious and then for her to use the bag of tricks to take away the addiction. But it was like it wasn't coming out of me. And you've got a hidden therapy, you've got a bag of tricks. I actually believe in now doing much more spiritual work yeah. is that you know um, there wasn't even though hypnotherapy is very clever sometimes you won't get permission for the unconscious to release the information you need to change the belief system why because mm. now I was asked a question if I can move I can, should I do a different video or should I okay, move on to this video mm. people will just listen but the Course in Miracles I believe the Course in Miracles will set you free if you do it with 100% intention but you know the thing of like Karma is not real. In absolute truth, yeah. this whole world is not real. 
this whole world is an illusion, <coughs> uh, magical belief systems and this and that is all not real. There is no duality. This world never existed. There is no time. There is no me. There is no you. No, none of it is real, okay? At the absolute. Yeah, none of it's real. Now, we talk about levels of consciousness and levels of karma. Now, ultimately, the Course will say this is all rubbish. You know, and there's no order of difficulty in miracles. Mm. The Course says there's no order of difficulty in miracles. So I'm, mm. I seem to be talking in riddles because I'm supposed to be talking about the Course in Miracles. And the Course says there's no order of difficulty in miracles. So you should be able to go, really, actually, if you've got lesson one in the Course in Miracles 100% on day one, you should be enlightened within the first day. <laughs> really, because you'll get that this whole world is an illusion and then everything will disappear and you'll be in infinite light for all eternity. But paradoxically, the Course has 365 lessons, even though it says there's no order of difference. I should get the Holy Spirit will tell me off now, I think. <laughs> told off. <laughs> for being some kind of crazy teacher or I would say, oh I, should, I should probably get into trouble with the Holy Spirit. But anyway, there is no order of difficulty. If you get, if you get the lesson 100% and you know, the whole world is an illusion, nothing is real in this world, all your belief systems are not real, um, other, the whole world is not real, time is not real, form is not real, and you let go of identification, giving it meaning, 100% now, that's enough and you d the work is done. You don't need the rest of the Course of Miracles. So I agree Let me, uh, with the Course of Miracles. It has to tell you there's no order of difficulty in miracles because if you believe there is a belief system that there is an order of magnitude or of difficulty, then it will be difficult. Yeah. So it's correct. However, I would say the Course, in my view, is seeing that lots of people have got lots of belief systems. It takes time for you yeah. to go and release everything but then some people might get the course very, very quickly. They'll go, well, there's no order of difficulty in miracles. The whole world's an illusion. And they're enlightened in a split second. And yes, the course in miracles will take you to enlightenment. But some people, it seems to take longer. And you might be doing 365 lessons over and over again. And you're still not enlightened. So why is that? Well, even though, in truth, everything I'm talking about is rubbish. Because there is no world. Um, but to the extent, and there is no order of difficulty in miracles, is a very high lesson because if you if you have doubt, you can't clear your negative belief systems. But just for explanation purposes, um, within the world, there's you could say that karma exists within the illusion, mm. and so if you, mm. which is why some students take longer to become enlightened than other students. But even though the Course would say, would say, like, forget everything I've just said, and just say it's all not real, and you're free immediately. I don't know if that makes sense. So what you can't see is the level... The karma is like how heavy the belief systems are. Mm. You know, because why is it that one student who believes in the world very lightly, mm. you know, we just read the Course and then become enlightened, you know, within a day. Another student is reading, there's no order of difficulty in miracles and this whole world is not real. And yet they seem to have to do a lot of work on the Course. And now, even though the Course says everything I'm saying is not real, because it can be done now, in one second, you just need absolute faith and to be able to let go of all your belief systems. But generally, if <coughs> you could say that different students have different levels of karma or different mm. levels of belief systems which are conflicting with application of the Course lessons. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, uh, some of the lessons, I'd say, are much more advanced. You know, like, God is the love in which I forgive. There's a me and there's a God. I'm speaking to God to call on God's love to forgive you. And then later on, it's saying, well, when you, when you realize the truth, there was nothing ever to forgive. Mm -hmm. So that's like, it's speaking to you. At it's almost like, yeah. it's almost like, I don't know what the Holy Spirit will, will, will tell me on this. It's almost like the Course <laughs> acknowledges that it might, you know, some students won't get it on lesson on day one, and so they will have to go through the lessons. And some students will probably get it by lesson, I don't know, 340, where they'll resonate as truth that there's nothing to be given their experience. <coughs> so even though the course says there is no karma and it's all not real, 
on some levels, maybe it does acknowledge that some students won't get it straight away, which I'd call the level of, of heaviness of the karma or their belief systems. Um, but it, you don't need to know about karma and belief systems. You just do the course and that will work. It's just another way of explaining, uh, explaining phenomena. Mm.